let's talk to the lucky people out there that have built a dynasty championship run. These are the people that are undefeated. This means you've probably got a solid squad already, but there might be a few cosmetic changes that you can make here or there to potentially boost your overall potential, you know, not to give and, you know, fall out during your playoff run. So Josh, give us a championship facelift. All right, I know you guys are going to disagree with me. I, we, you guys were talking shit on him before the before the show, but it's Chris Godwin. Uh, and the good thing about him is you're snagging him for cheap right now because Brady's having this off year affair. Uh, off year, I, I said, uh, and with Evans having a great year right now, or at least better year than Godwin, I don't think it's going to be too hard to convince a Godwin manager to get him to get him away from him. I mean, especially if he's on a losing team or even a middle of the ground team, they're seeing this. 10 point guy, which is just, Oh, I can't believe he's getting 10 points. The guy is averaging more than 10 targets since he's come back from injury six weeks ago. And you know what he hasn't yet done yet. He hasn't got a touchdown and eventually he's going to get a touchdown and that's 18 points. So Chris Godwin is an easy buy. He's only 26. So you're getting him for the long run. This is your not only championship run, but this is a good move for you in the future. Uh, even when Tom Brady goes to San Francisco. I agree completely yeah. with that, by the way. Chris yeah. Godwin. I thought you were going to disagree. It's it's no, one of those things that... Joe it's, doesn't like him. I like him. I love Chris Godwin. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not the sexy pick, and it's not... And I, don't, I think that's why everyone will be able to pull this trade off. You're not having to give up an arm and a leg. I'd be willing to give a first for Chris Godwin or something near that or a piece and a second. Or I mean, Chris Godwin is a great wide receiver, and he is... You know what the best part? He's consistent. So yeah. you you could have your your Devonte Smith right. I, I mean Devonte Smith for Godwin would be a pretty fair trade. I mean you're getting. I wouldn't do that, but I'm just saying like hypothetically, right? You get a guy who's gonna get you ten points, or you get your boomer bust player. So, Billy, I'm gonna I'm gonna put sure. myself out there a little bit. Why do you think I hate Chris Godwin? Well, you were the one that had mentioned earlier that Chris Godwin was having a bad year. He's That's having right. a bad year, but I don't think any of us expected him to be back as quickly as he was. No. He's clearly playing through injury because he hurt his hamstring almost immediately. It was playing through that. So I just think we're starting to see him get healthier as the season progresses. I love Chris Godwin as a player and the volume that he's seeing is an easy buy. I mean, 12 targets a game, pretty much every week. Count it. You take that with a healthy Chris Godwin and eventually this offense is going to figure it out. They have to. Also, they have a pretty decent, the easy schedule coming up to where he should have some pretty big games. So especially this week. No, oh, absolutely. So my guy is Keenan Allen and it's sketchy. All right. He played 30% of the snaps week one, hurt his hamstring, played 30% of the snaps week eight, hurt his hamstring. Uh, we haven't really seen him at all this year. Uh, he's 30 years old, which is very sketchy, but the Chargers are right where you want to see them. They're five and three. They're behind the Chiefs. We know the Chiefs are going to keep rolling, so they are constantly going to be playing to try to get that spot in the playoffs. So their schedule coming up, San Francisco, Kansas City, Arizona, Las Vegas, Miami, Tennessee, Indy, the Rams. And if you play week 18, you get Denver. So the tail end of that's a little sketchy, but he's set up for a prime run as soon as he gets healthy. They said he's close to turning the corner here, so – I would float an off route because this guy has been looking at Keenan Allen on his bench all year and dude hasn't done anything at all. And you're like, Hey man, you got a 30 year old wide receiver. I'll take him off your hands. Here's a pick. You float him a second or something. You'd be surprised about what that might land you. I actually completely agree. It's it's Keenan Allen's not going to miss this entire year with the hamstring injury. I mean, I hope he can get healthy enough to actually be on the field. And with Mike Williams out, it is a rush job, which is, I think, what happened last week, even though it didn't seem like a rush because it was about eight weeks. But um, he's going to be out there this week, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. You got to get him before he has a big game, which is any game that he plays a full game in. So. That's true. That's true. I, he definitely is somebody that you should be targeting. Herbert will get healthier too. So that's a shoe in. Okay. Uh, my last uh, player that I've got, if you're making a championship run is James Connor. Um, he's been hurt pretty much the entire season so far. Um, the only good thing is that 
whoever has James Conner is probably not anywhere close to competing this season. They've had him on their IR. Um, he's they kind of com- they counted on him to be the RB one on their team because of what he did last year. He has not been anywhere near that. I think we can all agree. Um, so this is a player I think you could target fairly cheaply at this point. He's got three weeks until his buy. I think that will also scare people off because he's got a week 13 buy. And if you're already making a championship run, you can afford to not have him during that week because you've already probably you're close to clinching your spot in the playoffs, but you might not. And the thing is, is just he's the perfect person to put in your flex. Like James Conner, at least the workload's going to be there once he gets back. There's not like any of the Arizona running backs have really carved out a substantial role. I mean, you know, Benjamin's been okay, but nothing, nothing near what James Conner was doing last year. And when James Conner comes back, he is going to get the full workload. And here's the thing. The Cardinals have desperately needed a good run game because Kyler Murray is not having a good year. I mean, he's having a good points here, but like as far as the Arizona Cardinals are having, they're not having a great season. So I think once they get James Conner back, they're going to try to feature him a little bit more. That's what was working last year. So I'm hoping they kind of learn from that. And I think down the stretch, James Conner is a guy that you're going to want on your championship team because this might be the last year of him, but you might as well use him while he is usable. All right. I, I want to, I don't disagree with you because for some reason, James Conner is involved in the passing game, which makes no sense because he can't seem to run past five yards each time. Uh, but I will say that, you know, Benjamin should have carved out a role because he ran for 12 for 92 against new Orleans, which is no slack because their defense is actually pretty good against the run. And the only time that James Conner even hit 90 yards last year is because he had 21 rushes. You know, Benjamin should be the, I don't know, the lead back, but he should at least be splitting carries with Conner. But that's just not the way it is for some reason. And Conner keeps getting five targets a game, and that just seems to be the thing. So you're unfortunately right. And this isn't a sexy, <laughs> this isn't a sexy trade. You're not it's excited not, about James Conner. You're, if this you already dirty nasty, right? If you already have Nick Chubb and somebody else, like you drafted Kenneth Walker or something, like you're already flying. You might as well take and see if you can pick somebody like James Conner off of one of these really bad teams that's probably not doing anything this year. And I think it's just a good trade this late in the season, just because of what his potential is. You know, you want that floor. And his floor is pretty high when he's in the game. What's it, what's worse than CC's pizza? Because that's what James Conner is. <laughs> Ooh, I don't even Chuck E. Cheese. I don't dislike Chuck E. Cheese. I, let's say day old Chuck E. Cheese. It's just been sitting on the counter. Kids might have touched it. When's like, the last time you went to Chuck E. Cheese? Pizza. Uh, five years ago. Oh well, that's recent-ish. I mean, it's what about pre, you, Bill? Pre-pandemic. Oh, I mean, we're we're talking twelve plus, thirteen plus years. I don't. Yeah. No, and that would be 17. It was before that. Probably All right, so, so we're in agreement. Long uh, time ago. <laughs> James Conner is Chuck E. Cheese pizza that you left and you went and played skee ball for an hour. You're not sure. It's a little shuffled around. Someone touched it. It's probably you a kid. On it. There's some sort of Hot Wheels on the on there, and it's 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 weird. But yeah. he could help you win a championship, which is what you know you would be trading for. Really, for. I really want to argue with you on this one because – Damn it, I don't like Conner. James Conner either. Like I don't. No, like I know. Him I just either. really it's want just... to argue with you about this one. His schedule is iffy. That that's the part it. that's the problem. Is the schedule is really bad for him and yeah. this Arizona well, team. He's is getting have a rough used spot. on there and is a cheap depth piece. If you can get him for the right price, like there's no reason not to make that trade because he's gonna touch the ball 18 yeah. times pretty much. And... He's just not gonna be your. You don't want him to be your RB one or two on your team. You want to have traded something like a, you know, a, like trail on Burks or something that you may not need in the future. That seems like a bad example, but somebody you may not need in the future. sending you a trade for Burks right now. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't, I meant like somebody that you may not need in the future. Trail on Burks would be somebody, but like somebody you might not need, like Elijah Moore or something that might, I don't even know if that's a good example, but somebody you might not need could turn into James Conner and you could actually have a piece that could win you a championship. Just saying. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that.